Okay. Right, this is gone. This is borage, and um, the leaves are a bit tough and uh, a bit hairy, but the flowers are quite pretty, and you can use them just as you can use violets to put on top of a salad, create a bit of colour. Nice blue flowers. And we're surrounded here, along this leafy path, by hedge garlic. And this is the plant. Wouldn't necessarily want to pick it right next to the uh, start of the path where dogs go, but... Uh, and that's with, hedge garlic. Uh, that's hedge garlic, which if you sliver it up and put into hot fat for, say, 10 seconds, preferably a deep fat fryer, uh, drain it off, it comes out like crispy seaweed all better. And does that look like anything else or is that a pretty safe one? That's a pretty safe one. It's Strangely, it's not a member of the garlic family. It's a member of the cabbage family. It seems to have developed a garlicky flavour to protect it from being eaten by animals because animals don't like the flavour of garlic. Uh, and so if you chew that, you'll find... If you chew that, you'll find that after about 15 seconds, you get a, a very vague garlicky flavour. It's not bad. Some people would say, put it in a salad. Of course, we've got cleavers here, which are supposed to have some sort of medicinal benefit, but I, I haven't really found a good culinary use for them. Can you eat that? Can you eat the cleavers? Cleavers, more? oh yeah, you can eat cleavers. So I could just pick one up you and, could just... that and eat that like that, could I? Yeah, let's have a go. See what we think doesn't really taste of anything. It's like, like your hawthorn, you said they're nice to eat. Well, they're okay. There's hawthorn over here. Hawthorn and mayflat. What I find with these is that they, they, they always taste different wherever, whichever area you're in. That was quite sweet. Sometimes they're a bit nutty and sweet. Mm. And Flour is sweet. That's one of the better ones. Mm. It's got a bit of character, that. But it's slight almondy flavour. Exactly. Yeah, that very is a nice one. Mm. Right. Well, this stuff we don't think we can eat, do we? This white. Well, we don't know what that is. It's either cow parsley or um, yeah. meadow sweet. It's definitely not. It's definitely not the um, hemlock that I, I was describing. The hemlock is the same family, but it's got huge huge stems yeah. which have got blotches on and they are hollow in the middle so it's quite different from this that was all right so um if we just go over here we'll, we'll we'll there are various places down this leafy path where i found st george's mushrooms but the most likely place is fairly soon the other thing i was telling you about was ground elder where is that? Here, everywhere. This is, this, is, this is ground elder. So this is a fairly young. I did try making a salad out of this, but I think it was fairly unsuccessful. But in my lovely chopping machine, um, anything that's this young or younger, I put in and um, give it a little wash first and grind it up and then use that as a parsley substitute. Can it's I got a parsley. Yeah. Can I eat that like that? parsley like slightly parsley like flavor and when it's ground up oh, it has. and of course at this time of the year now these big leaves um when i was collecting it in march most of the leaves were like that or smaller so it took a lot of collecting but now they're like this, you can pick them very quickly and cooked. It's not a bad substitute for spinach. Is that elder again there, that one? No, that's hedge garlic or garlic oh, hedge mustard. Gar hedge garlic, yeah. Yeah, that's that one. Yep. So we'll just go a little bit further. It's a great time of the year for wild things. Just not your favourite well, no, time is mustard season, isn't it? Well, yeah, I suppose so. So we'll have a good little look round here. I did find some, I came in around Easter time and it was so dry, I bought a 10 litre flagon of water and watered the spots where the mushrooms were growing in the hope that it might just 
get them swelled up a bit and also make some more grow. So just here was good. And I marked the ones that were growing with, with wood. So I put, put branches down. So there's probably some, some around about here. But we are now a couple of weeks beyond St. George's Day. No, three weeks beyond St. George's Day. So we may not have too much chance of finding them. They're white. And bloody difficult to spot in all this with all this stuff around um, now what we need to do is to look and see if I can find any more clumps of wood that I put down one of these trees growing here is a I thought or maybe the one that, that I thought was growing I thought was a eucalypt but I think maybe that's gone and they, they these mushrooms are all growing around the, the eucalypt So I'll tell you what we'll do, there's none here, we'll, sit, we'll hurtle down there and for another okay. quarter of a mile and okay. see if we can find some in another place. They're a very good mushroom to eat, quite a decent size, they can grow up to a couple of hundred grams anyway, and they grow in rings, so where you find one, you tend to find loads and in a good year you can fill the basket easily but we have had a lot we have had a lot of dry aprils yeah, yeah. A bit like september april april can be dry can be wet so um around the oak trees mainly down here you've got Spanish, Spanish bluebells. Blue yeah. You can't eat those, can you? No, no. What about primrose? I don't think you can eat primroses. You can look at them and admire them. What are these? these are the garlic again. That's right? the that, that's the hedge garlic. It's everywhere, really. Roadside verges, um, pretty well everywhere you look. Almost almost as common as nettles. Yeah. This is one thing you can't eat, though. What is that? That's called lords and ladies. And I did try and nibble a bit of that once and it virtually killed the back of my throat. Yeah. Corrosive. A bit, a bit like um, there's a Jamaican green vegetable called Callaloo, which you can buy in tins in, in West Indian shops or eth ethnic, even in Tesco's in an ethnic area. And uh, I nibbled a bit of Callaloo raw once and again that, that hit the back of my throat. I wish I hadn't eaten it. Do you only do and you, you only do these stupid things once? Mm. Can you eat stock, please? I don't know. I think somebody asked me that very recently. Don't think so. So all of these oak trees here, I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, so these mushrooms can can grow anywhere. This is just a particularly good place for them. But I've, in a good year, I found them all the way down. I stopped on the Onga Road once, down where the new um, um, burial place is. Yeah. And uh, they were all along the roadside verge there. I just filled a basket in no time. But you need moisture to make them grow. If you could only have access to five wild plants, not including mushrooms. Not including mushrooms. I don't know. I th I'm not really sure. I thought it was um, giant hogweed, but oh. you might be right. Yeah. There's plenty of it. Plenty of it. This is hogweed. And when you take the you shoots, that? yeah, and it, what I've done with that is dip it into a gram, slightly spicy gram flour batter yeah. and deep fry it. You, you want to get the shoots, so if you find a plant, normally in the, in the middle of the plant, you find the young shoots, which yeah, need yeah. to be that big or smaller. Yeah. It's all right. 
So you fire plays at sight. Oh my god. What, for me or for my use as a caterer? Uses as a caterer. <laughs> well, net, nettles. I always pick a lot of nettles in March. Yep. Got a freezer full of net, blocks of nettles, bricks of nettles. Um, and uh, ground, um, now I'm getting into ground elder. Uh, if you say so. We'll have to look that up when we get on. Because I've got the Hugh Fernley Whittingstall series of books is very, very good. And I've got, I've got the, that. I'm just going to have a quick look here. This is not the primary place for, for St. George's, but it's worth a little look. Um, and and wa Wild Garlic. Wild Garlic. Is that called Ransom? Yeah. Very common around here. Yeah. I can show you a lot of that. Um, I like uh, chickweed, chickweed, and I do like hairy bittercress. Hairy what? Hairy bittercress. bittercress. Have you never come across never that? Heard of that one. All right, I shall take you to a place where that grows. Well, that's your five, so your, your chickweed and your nettles will be your volume. Well, chick chickweed takes a lot of picking and a lot of preparation. Oh yes, because I, I well I, I just tend to use the leaves, so it's quite stringy. I don't put the stalks in a salad. No, I tend to put it in salads. So yeah, and the, the, obviously the flowers are quite nice as well. Violets I like picking. See if we can find some violets today. How's your car going up rough terrains? Uh, oh, it's, well, seven out of ten. Not that. Looks all right, I suppose. Yeah. Well, push it up. Ah! Ha ha! Whoa! St George's mushroom. Looks good. They can grow bigger than this, but this is nicely developed. Look at that, isn't it? That's a perfect one. Sometimes they go a bit brown. Sometimes they they get stressed because they haven't had them enough moisture. And we'll just have a... It's got a lovely mealy, slightly lemony smell. Nice and smell. Uh, it's not got any maggots, which is good. And it's perfect. And where you find one, Often find more. It's, worth, it's not worth doing this in general, disturbing all the leaves. But when you found one, it's worth having a thorough look. Yep. However, I think we might be lucky just up here. <laughs> we may even have another look where we started off. Hmm. Normally, I've never found one there before. Normally, find them over to the right. You had a good look at that, the good smell. Yep. That's called a St. George, St. George's mushroom. It comes out on, an, on or around St. George's Day, April 23rd. There's one. Hey. Look at that. You see, you, yeah, you can't mistake this for anything else because it's white on top and it's white underneath. Leave the dirt behind. So there's nothing else like that with no. the top and white underneath. No poisonous ones like that. No. What'd you do with the other one? I put it in your basket. Oh good. <laughs> I want to eat that. Well that again is per perfect. Can be bigger they can grow bigger than that. And they usually grow together. And this is a bit late for them, is it? This is the last year. Well, yeah, I mean, once you get strong sun and warm weather in, in May, they go away. But really, the weather, well, today is, is more, more like April than May, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but it all depends on, on climatic conditions. We had a bit of rain last week, and that's obvious. And it's shady here, so that explains things.
I'm going to say there's another plant here which is quite interesting. It's called ground ivy. You can eat it. It's got quite a strong and interesting flavour. I wouldn't necessarily want to eat a lot of it, but it used to be used for clarifying beer. Oh. And when I find, and normally I find St George's mushrooms where I find um, ground ivy. So we'll have a little look in here. Okay. They do grow in here. Can't see any at the moment. The the three we found so far have actually hit us right in the face, haven't they? Yeah. Hmm. All right, I might have to give up. Still, we've got. Look at it over there. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen them in quite such large numbers. This, this there ought to be some St George's here, you know. Yes, there's one. Yeah. You've got good eyes. You have to. You have to. So, what does it feel like when you see a. Does it, do you get a little excitement when you see a, yeah. a, a mushroom sort of. The, the, this one, obviously, is the. A bit of worse for age. There's another one in here. Oh, you still get an excitement. I've taught my kids to recognise them. They come out. Obviously, the 16 year old now has learnt to say, No, I don't want to come out with you, Dad. But the, the 11 year old is still bribable. There's one. Where? 